Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another day. <laughs> Welcome to another day. Another day. Another day. Another day. Another SAT solved live. And、uh, I have been sort of a mess this week. So the last couple of streams with me trying to do this PSAT has been an absolute.、Um, uh, I'll just say mess. Mess. So I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to make things smoother. And finally, I've at least gotten my summer schedule、um, sort of organized so that that probably shouldn't happen anymore.、Uh, I won't be able to stream that many SATs this summer. So I should just come out with that right off the bat.、Uh, I don't think I'll be streaming many SATs at all.、Uh, however, I do intend to be streaming like as many. Almost five times a week, if not five times a week, throughout the summer by waking up at 5 a.m. every morning and then streaming at 6 a.m., which is 7 p.m. in Eastern Time and 4 p.m. in Pacific Time. So that's kind of my goal right now. I'll just be streaming at 6 a.m. here. It will not be the SAT,、uh, but who knows? Things might change. So that's just a quick little update.、Uh, Stabilize my summer schedule so I now know that I will not be doing the SAT too much,、uh, but I will definitely be streaming、uh, stuff in the mornings.、Uh, Joe, what's up? What will I be streaming? I'll be primarily streaming, I think,、um, reading and writing. I don't know. For this week, what I know for sure is I'm going to be keeping it pretty chill. like... Wordle, vocabulary.com, some poetry, maybe some writing of poetry. Just like one hour streams, just like one hour streams in my mornings. Maybe gaming, but probably not in the morning, man. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. for gaming is like way too intense. Like, that's insane. <laughs> so, so, yeah, no gaming in the mornings for me. You know, I'm starting to think I probably should have like a little chat bar、uh, even here. Uh, but you know what? I don't think I can do it. Anyway, it's, it's a little too late. Anyway, yeah, so、uh, I have a rough plan to stream as much as possible, but it will not be a lot of SAT tests. A couple, a couple, I have to do it anyway because I'm going to be teaching them this、uh, during this summer, but it's only like two or three、uh, that I'll be streaming. Uh, and this is one of the, this is one of the three.、Uh, I'm going to finish off the PSAT for October 14th, 2005,、uh, t- for the 2015 October 14th、uh, PSAT. I'm going to be finishing it off today. So let's get right into it. That's just my quick updates.、Uh, I am not going to do my strategy recap because I've already,、um, I've already shared that in the first stream of this series of the 2015 October 14th. So if you need, go ahead and Find that video and,、uh, and look on my strategy recap. I'm going to right into, I'm gonna go right into the,、uh, to the PSAT. All right. It is getting close to like my bedtime right now, so I, I just want to kind of smash through this and not make too many mistakes. All right. Let me set up my timer. Drop something. All right, and here we go. <laughs> Solving SATs, like literally right before I fall asleep. <laughs> Passage four, let's go. Three, two, one, let's go. You know what I didn't re- I did- I realized I didn't even check how much time I spent.、Oh, I'm at 28 minutes. Okay, that's not bad. Let me just restart my time. Just because you know what? I actually do need to check how much time I spent. So I spent 7 minutes and 20 seconds on the first passage. So 10 minutes ish. on So 17 minutes total. Oh, okay. I'm very. I have a lot of time. Right, I have 32 minutes left. All right, here we go. So, restarting time. Here's my stopwatch back to zero. Restarting time. Three, two, one, let's go.
What is this? What to the slave is for the Fourth of July? The idea of independence is ironic when you're a slave. Frederick Douglass used to be a former slave, 1852, and he gave it to an anti-slavery group. Okay, up in the north. Fellow citizens, allowed me ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? To your national independence extended? Are those principles extended to us? Are those extended to us? And am I therefore called upon to bring humble? He's like kind of going straight at that irony. The blessings to us, the blessings to us. Would to God, both for your sakes and ours, that an affirmative answer could be truthful. This would make everything so easy if it were true, but it's not. So this is him being a little bit more direct. When the chains of servitude have been torn from his limbs, a heart, that's from the Bible, I assume. Interesting. Everyone would be so happy if they could be independent the way all slaves would be happy if they could be independent the way that the Declaration of Independence suggests. But such is not the state. He's speaking on the 4th of July. The measure, it's, it's like this painful irony not enjoyed in common shared by by you not by me huh life and healing stripes and death to me stripes of uh, flagellation by the way like of the whip yours not mine you may rejoice i must mourn this is a good speech i can imagine i'm a little tired right now so i don't like feel the feelings but he even uses the word irony, by the way. Um, I don't feel the feelings, but this would be such a good speech. If I had more energy, I think I could make it much more powerful. I could, like, act it out. Do you mean citizens to mock me by asking me today? Do you mean to mock me? Oh, interesting. He's kind of almost now getting offended. Okay. I'm going to add a try and transition there. There is a parallel to your conduct. Dangerous to copy the example of a nation whose crimes... We're thrown down. He's talking about uh, the Babel. We don't really need to know this, but whatever. By the rivers of their Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. We hanged our harps. Sh straight from the Bible right now. Experience Jewish exercises. Eh, interesting. That's a good uh I hear the wail of millions. <laughs> this fourth of July is not truly realized. The meaning, the true meaning of it is has been um contradicted by the reality of the these slaves. So this is like a let us feel sorrow. kind of speech
Okay, I'm at 5 minutes 05. Uh, I'll pause. And here is my map of the passage. Here's my map of the passage. Oh, I am, I am, I am pretty tired. Uh, but I think I did it. I think I can probably put together a decent map. Here we go. You know what the problem is? It's, it's all fairly repetitive to me, but I'll try. Top left, Frederick Douglass. He's speaking on the 4th of July. And who is he speaking to? He's speaking to an anti-slavery convention. Okay, so he's, uh, he starts off by talking about your Declaration of Independence. And, oh, no, no. He talks off by, uh, by asking, who am I called here, you know? Who am I to be speaking here? What rights do I have? Not exactly those lang that language, but something like, how, why am I called to be here? Is it because I am, um, like, the the offers the the off the the promise of independence in the Declaration of Independence uh, extended to me? And then the next paragraph, uh, still at the top. He starts off by saying, wow, if that were true, if every question I asked in the previous paragraph were true, so we would all be so happy. We would be so elated. We would be jubilant, right? Uh, we would be. This is a conditional sort of almost sarcastic thing. And it's, it's a pretty long paragraph. He just kind of keeps saying that in different ways uh, from what I remember. And at the end, he says, who could... <laughs> and this is just a rhetorical way of saying the same thing, but who would not be happy to know? <coughs> <coughs> who would not be happy to know that this, that the Declaration of Independence, that the that the promise of independence has been given to them? Not I. I would definitely be happy. I'm one of those, right? So he brings it around to that. Uh, and that's the bottom of that particular paragraph. And now we're getting towards the bottom of this column. Next column, next paragraph, though, starting at the bottom of this column. Next paragraph says, well, hey, this is none of this actually holds true today. This does not exist today. We're in a sad state of affairs. And your celebration, your uh, everything in the Declaration of, uh, of Independence and everything for this 4th of July, everything that is a celebration is only for you, not for me. I, I, and then I think we're moving to the top right now. He says, where you hear celebration, I hear the mourning wail of millions or something like that, of the slaves. It's like a sad and blackened day. That's the top, right? I think. Then after that, he says something like, um, you know, that whole right column, he says a bunch of things that I feel like is all fairly repetitive. I do not remember it. It's my, my map is <laughs> failing me right now. I do not remember it. But at the bottom of that long paragraph in the middle of the right column, it, he says, and American slavery is my topic. But yeah, he's just saying that there's this irony and that it's a really sad day because no one has, because people are not free, are not genuinely free. Uh, American slavery is my subject. And then at the end, he, he, he wraps it up by saying, this is a very black day, something like that. So that is my map of the passage. Um, Given how fuzzy my brain is, like given how sleepy I am, I don't really, I kind of forgive myself for having a bad map of the passage. Uh, but yeah, it's not great. If I could grade my map of the passage, I would say something, something in the range of, I still got the main ideas, you know, and I, and I didn't break, I like kind of know like where things are. So I would still give myself a C, you know, but I don't have the details and I'm, I'm specifically, I'm missing a lot, a big chunk of the right side. Uh, I feel like there's nothing huge that I missed there. You know what? But I did miss that big chunk, so maybe that's a C minus or D plus. Yeah, I got the main ideas, but yeah, that on the right column, on the right side, I kind of missed the big chunk. So, 
Yeah, not so great. That's my map of the passage. Uh, how did you guys do compared to me? Uh, I'm about to use this map and see how many no look answers I can get. Okay, let's get into questions. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Uh, so slow, pulling on my pencil and get go getting going. Oh, right, there was this quotation of the, okay, okay, yeah. Is to highlight the sadness, you know, highlight sadness, irony. Um, the principles with reality, yeah. 540. Explain the values? No, he just takes it as um, for granted that you guys will understand what it means. The questions in the first paragraph primarily serve to show that that's not really the case. It's rhetorical. I like primarily to sort of emphasize like what station, like it's so the sort of weird irony around his position being able to speak. Okay, so the discrediting happens, by the way, all the way down. Oh, that's a no, no, no that's a no, that's a no look answer. Well, no, that's not a no look answer. I'm being stupid. Okay. Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, the phrases, pardon me, allow me to ask, serve primarily to, uh, in content. He, oh, he kind of humbles himself and makes himself at the level of a slave. Um, what? It's such a weird question. It's a weird question. I mean, A is the most direct answer, so I'm gonna go with it, but that's not a very good, it's like. It's a sadness, uh, not extended to all. Disparities between the lives of different groups. Yep. 750. Was that a no look answer? I think that was a no look answer. Best evidence. Uh, this is at the bottom left. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, over here. 27 to 30. Exactly. A 15. Is uh, expecting him is uh, insulting? Yeah, I guess. And the values? This, I'm not sure. His hostility, no. Who do not believe that he is? It? No. Okay, yeah, I just need to find those insulting because over here, I think it's over here, to mock me by asking ask me to speak today. Okay, now that part is kind of like the insulting part, but over here. To forget these people and would make me a reproach. I guess, but that's kind of like 64 to 68, I feel like it's going to be there. Okay, let's look at 69. Okay, I'm going to have to go through process elimination. 36. To drag a man in fetters into the grand illuminative and call upon him, or inhuman call upon him to join you in joyous anthems, or in heavy mockery and sacrilegious irony. Expecting him to celebrate is mockery. 
Uh, yeah, I guess that works because, but it's a, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty indirect, pretty indirect. I must mourn this, a man disconnects to him. That was pretty tough. A significant contrast that Douglas draws between himself and his audience is I should probably put that. Okay, um He is uh you know, he's black and he's not he doesn't have the freedoms. The value of the principles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I don't know how I didn't see that right away. Okay. I am not that man. He suggests that he could not resist the joyful feeling if he had an... Yeah, that's correct. That, that sentence was a little confusing, so I had to take some time to think about that one. 24 state most nearly means... So, I don't know how many no-look answers. Such is not the state of the case. That's not the reality of the case. That's not the condition of the case. It's not the condition of the case. Condition, it's kind of a weird reality. Okay. It's kind of a weird answer choice, honestly. Moving on to the next passage. Here, I'll... Okay, uh, passage one, Ingram, microbes, citing the, citing the microbes, 2010, Silka, Worth, and Sork, and Ingram, genetic structure, in a lichen, okay, I'm genuinely exhausted, but I'm gonna keep going, <laughs> so tired, holy crap, Spanish moss hangs in the mood setting. Festoons from trees in the South East, yeah, all the time, Argentina. Neither originating in Spain nor moss. <laughs> it's not from Spanish, or it's not Spanish or moss. Badly named. Bromeliads. Not even plants. Similar festoons, so this is a different group. A phototroph capable of photosynthesis, an algae or bacterium, and a fungus. A mutualistic symbiosis. The pair goes by a name that's familiar, a lichen. The association so intimate and the appearance is so distinctive, name lichen as though they were individual organisms. Breath. The naming as as if they're individual. So we're attacking the, yeah, the sort of history of the name, the naming system, the nomenclature. Okay. I see. 
So the lichen is a pair, but the lichen can actually pair with other things. Uh, Dan, I think you already know the answer to that. No, I don't. Dan, you troll. <laughs> the like air. The lichen benefits from the structured space and the microclimate. Uh... Okay, you know what? I should have circled these fools. Space and microclimate. The space and the climate. Okay, created by the canopy. Okay, this is actually a little complicated. I need to go make sure. So let me make sure I get these fools uh, circled. I want to make sure I don't lose track of these three. Okay. The coastal live oak. There we go. The coastal live oak does not have strong habitat preferences. This. Okay, oh, shoot. All right, wait, hang on. Hang on. I just got to do one, two, Three, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Dance canopy. <sighs> Grows mostly during the winter season. The winter, most of its water. Thus, in these deciduous. Oh my God! What's deciduous? Wait, these are deciduous. The winter deciduous is an evergreen okay jesus all right i need to find some way of separating this because i'm f actually legit overwhelmed okay um so in californian localities thus because they shall in contrast let me be a little in the canopy of the evergreen okay so this is a who the coast Yo, wh whoever wrote this passage is literally, they need to t take a writing class. They're, they're writing in such a hard way. Uh. Okay. I'm more or less, I cleared it, but it's not, honestly, my brain is a little fuzzy, so it's like not that organized in my head, but it's good enough. I, I know roughly where everything is, I, even though I don't really remember the details. The trees benefit from the input of like it. The trees benefit. Okay, here is we're focusing on the trees benefit. Okay, uh, so this is a different focus from the previous one. They they get more nitrogen, phosphorus, and water from local rainfall and fog dripping. Uh, sometimes amounting to seventy eight percent like biomass. Country market to nutrient cycling, whatever the hell that is. Thus, the association can lead to a. Okay, this is a conclusion paragraph. This really is a mutual benefit of all and not highly specific. Wow, that was uh, rough, yo. That was rough. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, so I'm trying to find my time. 1810, all right. Stop. And here is my map of the passage. Here's my map of the passage. Uh, before I go. Oh, what? Yeah, oh, actually, you were not trolling. Well, um... You know, the old SAT, the old SAT, the one we took, Dan, um, it tended to be a little more like the answer choices used to be trickier. Uh, they used to like use extreme abstractions in the answer choices like A, B. And there were five answer choices back in the day, A, B, C, D, E. And the answer choices were like written in a complicated way. So a lot of times, um, the difficulty of the old SAT came from just like looking at the answer choices and knowing what it meant. Uh, and uh, which is not like, um, which is not like real reading. Uh, it's more just like being able to process difficult uh, abstractions through very difficult vocabulary and map it onto concrete instances that are in the page, that are on the passage, right? Um, that's no longer really the case. The SAT swung more towards being like the ACT, where you had it, it actually benefits you a lot to just like read it and know what it means. <laughs> and the answer choices are not that hard, uh, but you have to pick up on the nuances of the meanings uh, instead. I mean, it's, a, it's an oversimplification, but the but if I really had to make like a sort of like a contrast between the old SAT and new SAT, it'd be kind of like that. So. I think I think back in the day, if you went right to the questions, you weren't harming yourself as badly as 
now. I think nowadays, if you go back and if you look at the questions first, what happens is、um, you basically just waste time.、Um, you waste time. If you like, for the SAT, there's basically three types of passages. There's a literary fiction passage. There is a、uh, speech and debate type of passage where you have to learn like rhetorical, like features, like of speech and debate. And then there's science research, science research in natural and social sciences. And those in those within those three、uh, genres, there's very 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 common conventions. Like with literature, there's always a character, a, some settings. Or maybe sorry, there's always at least one character. There's always at least one setting. There's always some sort of conflict, and that conflict comes from character motivation. So if you understand those genre conventions and you look for it, then you're going to be well prepared to answer some of those questions.、Uh, and then same thing with、uh, speech and debate type passages. You know, if you just know, hey. What's the audience? What is he? What's what's he trying? What's his purpose? What is he trying to persuade them of?、Uh, and what are his reasons? What's his reasoning?、Uh, what are his appeals? You know, how is he establishing credibility? Like, if you have like a rough, if you know you're looking for that, and you read it once, you know, you're gonna be pretty well prepared to answer the questions. Finally, with the science too, you know, if you just know for science passages, you know, there's gonna be a background and then a hypothesis, and、um, there's gonna be like. Various studies, or even sometimes just one randomized control trial or whatever, like where there were there's like control variables and experiment variables. But as long as you're paying attention to that, and then you come to the results in the discussion, and you know you're looking to for that, you know what you're looking for. Then when you go to the questions, you're gonna be pretty well set. Like knowing the genre, of the, knowing the conventions of the genre is gonna be good enough. In fact, doing it that way, you'll actually save more time. If you go to the questions and you try to put up. All line references. It actually wastes more time,、um, and it doesn't even. If, if anything, it makes you rush through the reading, and then and then and then you actually just do worse overall. That's at least the experience that a lot of my students、uh, in you know in my online class.、Uh, sorry, my actual classes, my offline classes、um, have. But also, like a lot of my view- viewers on YouTube, they always they always leave a comment in the YouTube videos,、uh, in the YouTube comment section, and also in Discord, like how much their reading improved as soon as they just started taking their time to read the passage,、uh, instead of like doing these little question tricks. Grace says it's because the questions frame your mind and it might mislead you.、Um, Generally speaking, the framing that the questions do for you when you do look at the questions up front are is fine if you are miserably bad at, like if you just do not understand fiction whatsoever, and you're not even aim you're not aiming for eight hundred, you're aiming for like a you know six fifty or something, you know what? Just accept it. Like you just suck. You suck at literary fiction. It's fine. In that case, it's better to just like look at the questions, and. At least know what you're looking for, rather than just being like,、uh, I'm reading all these words and I'm just swimming in words. I don't understand anything that's happening. At least if you look at the questions first, you can frame it around the questions that make sense to you, and so,、uh, so you can at least know at least five things to be looking for, <laughs> you know. But that said, that's also a lot of times, a lot of times that's easier said than done. I mean, it's hard to juggle all that in your head. Honestly,、uh, it's pretty stressful. So. Uh, if you, as long as you have more than like two three months to prep, I would just recommend learning how to read literary fiction. <laughs> just like learn the genre, like learn learn the genre, learn the genre conventions, get better at it. Anyway, um, uh, one didn't you?、Uh, just to go back to your thing,、uh, just to answer that real quick, uh, Dan, uh, just twenty sixteen. That that's when the new SD came out. Anyone who's studying, to,、uh, anyone who's studying for the SAT right now, should not be looking at stuff before 2016. All right, so I'm going to be、uh, going to my map of the passage. Here's my map of the passage. This is when I、um, just, without looking back at the page, I just try to recall everything that I read. And yes, I'm pretty fuzzy. <laughs>、uh, I don't think my map is going to be that great today, but let's try. So top left, here we go. Uh, top left passage one. There's this guy in 2010 who is talking about.、Uh, he's primarily concerned about like the taxonomy, the the na- nomenclature, like the how they how we characterize lichens. So he, what he does is in the very first paragraph he describes the he defines a lichen. He doesn't use the word lichen right away. He talks about this one type of species that or one type of thing 
right? That is made up of a photo something, photo phyton or something like that. I don't know what it is. Something that uses photosynthesis, and then like a, a hang on, what was it? And then a fungus, and then they they kind of live together in mutuals, like in a symbiotic manner. I don't. I've, he used like this some technical term. I don't remember the technical term, uh, but we're around like line ten ish right now. And then after that, he uh, he says, well, it has a common name, lichen, and. Uh, Hang on. Actually, I think I'm sequencing it backwards. Actually, I think this was the second paragraph. I think the first paragraph was about the Spanish moss. So he starts with... So you know what? I'm, I'm fuzzy on the sequence of it, okay? Uh, one happened... I'm, I'm pretty sure the Spanish moss happened first. But anyway, the Spanish moss thing is about like this one Spanish moss that exists from California all the way down to Argentina. But the weird thing is it's not Spanish and it's not a moss. It's a lichen. <laughs> and then... Uh, there's this other species in the West called Spanish moss, but it's not even a plant, that one. It's not even a plant. And then the second paragraph says everything what we were talking about, the lichen. That's when we introduced the lichen. Um, so now I'm realizing something I didn't realize when I was first reading it. It's um, There's two types of Spanish moss. One type of Spanish moss is a, fl- is a flowering plant, and another type of Spanish moss is not even a plant. It's a lichen. Okay, I just, I just, I just pieced that right now. Uh, which is kind of cheating technically I probably should be using the time for that but but whatever um, anyway so paragraph two paragraph two talks about the definition of like and just based on what I just said and then it says um, and then it says this is horrible naming like why do we call it a lichen when it's two different things it's because of back in history there was care uh, a Carol Linnaeus, Carol, Carol, Carol? I, I mean, I know his le- last name is Linnaeus. I forget his first name. But there's this dude, Linnaeus, and he just came up with this idea that there are going to be its, its own separate genus, something, something, something. And then and then his his, his little disciple, his acolytes, take, took, ran off with that. And then and even now we're using these terrible naming, me- naming mechanisms. We're treating it as if it's one organism when it's actually two different things living together symbiotically. That's the end of the passage. Passage 2 bo- starts at the bottom of that p- column. Uh, it says, um, and he uses that same one species that is referring to. This one species is found and can uh, and kind of uh, coexists with three different oak species. The crazy thing, by the way, about these two passages, they're not even directly communicating with each other. It's just literally the only common point is that they're talking about the same. They're talking about the same species. Uh, mosquitoes like chilling out here uh, with me. So anyway, so then. So then, what happens after 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 uh, ta- mentioning these three species is that the first two species are deciduous; they're winter deciduous, and deciduous. I mean, deciduous, and those two winter deciduous trees, you know, um, like they actually benefit the lichen in some way. Okay, uh, and then the other tree, uh, the evergreen tree, that one also benefits the lichen in some way. Don't remember what the we, what the ways are. Uh, that goes all the way down to the bottom of the middle of the paragraph uh, of the column. I mean, and at the bottom of that column, it talks about how the trees benefit from the lichens as well. So uh, that wraps up and sa- and uh, with this conclusion, hey, they're mutually beneficial to each other. So what's the 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 sort of inference the inference you can make about these two passages, the way they're communicating with each other, is that the second passage suggests that maybe the two the fungus and the, the, the photophyton or whatever it's called, right? The two organisms that are living together in symbiosis, right? Uh, that are considered a single species, like a, uh, maybe we should treat it as a single species because this species can now live symbiotically with tr- various oak species, you know? And so it's like this weird sp- symbiosis of a symbiosis uh, situation that's going on. A- and that's like the little tricky thing that Passage 2 uh, gets into which I guess suggests that maybe it is a species, but he never makes, the, but the author of Passage 2 never made, out and out makes the argument that lichens should be considered a species. Okay, that's my map of the passage. I would say that's a pretty good map of the passage. I would give myself a grade of like a B plus or even A minus for that. B plus though, because you know what it is? Uh, I forgot a lot of details. I forgot a lot of the details, especially in Passage 2. Okay. Now this my, this this mosquito is kind of bothering me right now, but I don't think I can catch it. So, whatever. Let's just finish off these questions and finish off this test. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. 
the main purpose of both passage one and passage two, uh, the main purpose is to, hang on, let me not get lost. One is to argue about the taxonomy and one is to argue about, uh, to explain a thing. What the hell? No. An invitation interaction between two. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What a weird. This These two passages are so strange to pair together. Okay. 15 arrangement most nearly means. Um, probably like, you know, um, like um, uh, a living arrangement called a living situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's literally what I predicted. Here we go. 39 host most nearly means, I mean, you know, the one that is uh, hosting the other species. Three host species, the one that, um, three host species, three harboring species. Yo, know, these questions are really weird. This is not like the new, it's, this doesn't feel like the new SAT. It feels kind of like the old SAT. But harboring is fine, I guess, whatever. Eh. 1930 let's keep going the leaves and branches of oak trees provide which the canopy and so that's a place to hang on let's, let's double check space and climate space and climate hmm a place to grow I feel like it's 43, 44, it's a place to grow. It's kind of weird though. Be honest, talk about the papas. The 지금 타이밍 타이밍 중이어서 시험 보고 있어. 60 56 to 60 the hell the leaves and branches where the hell is the leaves and branches So, leaves and branches is the canopy, I think. That's effed up, dude. This is just a vocab question. That's effed up. Boo. 22 minutes. Took me three minutes to get through those. Two minutes and a half to get through those. Man, this question is, this passage is no good, man. More light if associated with Cali... California value oak than with a coastal live oak. Okay. During winter, California would have more light. Being with California would have more light. In California, grows more in the winter season, and winter provides thus in these inlet with deciduous must may be a more beneficial because okay, because they shed the leaves allowing light. In contrast, light be being light up for the evergreen. Uh, yes, would agree. Longer season, no. Yes. Man, what the this these questions are not good. I kinda don't recommend this passage.
Most abundant? I don't remember this. Okay, sometimes come out to the 78. Where's the evidence for this? 70-74? That doesn't really help. But I guess 70-74 is the closest one. That's not a very good question either. 64, I'm just going to do a mul multiple choice. I'm across... Yeah, that 64 doesn't help. I'm going to just do process elimination. 47. Dude, these questions are not good. Um, no, yeah. And 38. Dude, that's... These questions are not good. It's like this stupid, like, process elimination question. Boo! Thirty-six. Yeah, these. Who wrote this question? There's some some intern wrote these questions. <sighs> the Spanish moss lichen. Spanish moss lichen. Yeah. The phototroph vertin line sixty. Could be an algae. Because the phototroph is basically like a algae or bacterium. Yeah. <sighs> All right. It's very annoying. It was an annoying. That was an annoying uh, <laughs> passage. All right. Let's go grade myself. I'm about to grade myself. Let's go. Oh my god, that was so annoying. The passage was no good. <laughs> okay. October 14th, let's go. Question 10. I chose CBB, CBC accordingly, according to this. 12 is C, apparently. Best evidence for the previous question, the risk of foodborne illness in line 19 to 21. It's kind of obvious. Whoops. Okay, that's kind of dumb. Okay, 13, 14, A, A, C, C. A, A, C, C are correct. C, B, C, B are correct. So I got, how many questions is that? I got eight out of nine. All right, now let's go. B, D, B. Wait, is that 19? BDB is correct. And then DBAC, DBAC are correct. And then CAB, CAB are correct. So that's uh, 10 questions, one, two. Okay. 
And then this is uh, this is also ten questions. DCAC, DCAC correct. BCBA, BCBA are correct. And then AC, AC are correct. So that's ten out of ten. And then we're going over here. BBD, thirty-nine BBD correct. Forty-two. DA correct. Forty-four BD correct. And then AA correct. So that's uh, nine out of nine. So that's uh, total I got forty-six out of forty-seven. And one of them was a pretty dumb mistake. All right. Well, that was honestly it's not a very good test on us uh, like the early like the 2015 PSAT is not great I feel like you're just practicing like the like practicing making the tests so I would not recommend the 2015 PSATs honestly for some of these tests they don't feel like the new SAT actually they feel uh, I took the 2015 October SATs and I've now I've taken both of them I do not recommend them for the SAT okay I feel that my computer is actually messing uh is actually like kind of about to like it's slowing down pretty se severely Um, not sure why. Okay, so my video quality is uh, probably going to go down for a sec, but you know what? Uh, since I'm wrapping up anyway, I won't freak out too much about this. Guys, uh, so that's it for me. I will... Uh, I'm just trying to think of what to say about this particular test. I just don't recommend 2015 PSAT tests. I, I think it's just the College Board was still sort of testing out the new format and they were sort of getting adjusted to it. The two, the two October tests I just took, not high quality. Questions are pretty dissimilar to the way that the new tests are. Uh, and what the sort of, like, I can feel what the aims are of the new SAT and these feel kind of off. Okay. Now, I do think they're probably better than stuff that you'll find on like the College Board. So maybe if, if you have to, it's like a last resort uh, kind of set of resources, but it's better to work with newer SAT and newer, probably better. I haven't taken the other PSATs yet, but I, I assume the later PS, PSATs are much better. So yeah, I will not recommend these particular tests uh, for practice. Um, it wasn't so bad though, and I got 46 out of 47. Uh, and that one mistake that I did make was kind of a silly mistake. So, uh, you know, it's not like illogical. It's just very strange. Uh, these questions are not like, building the habits that you need for, for the new SAT. Uh, I mean, generally they are, but there's like many that are kind of just weird. Uh, so that's, that's I guess, that my final impression of, these, of this particular test. Anyway, sorry guys for having such a choppy stream where I'm dividing up one test into like three different streams. I uh, just, my schedule's been like insane. Uh, but yeah, I'll start stabilizing this week. Okay, guys, until then, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, uh, stay healthy and keep on growing. Day to day, always find something new to improve yourself on and keep on working on that, guys. And your scores will follow. I'll see you guys. Take care. Peace.